Hi friends, uh, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we are going to see the estimation of serum cholesterol. If you are new to this channel, please press the subscribe button and click on the bell icon to get notified. Total serum cholesterol is the amount of cholesterol that is present in the blood. The total serum cholesterol level mainly comprises of uh, high density lipoprotein HDL, low density lipoprotein LDL and triglycerides. So why we have to estimate the serum cholesterol level? The measurement of serum cholesterol levels can serve as an indicator of uh, liver function, biliary function, intestinal absorption, coronary artery disease and thyroid function. So these, so by measuring the serum cholesterol, we can have an indication of the different functions of uh, organs like liver, biliary function, intestinal absorption, coronary heart disease and the thyroid function. The cholesterol levels are important in the diagnosis and uh, classification of hyperlipoproteinemia. Stress, age, gender, hormonal imbalance, pregnancy, all these can affect the cholesterol levels. So additional uh, reading uh, can be done uh, from this book, the Handbook of uh, Lipoprotein Testing. So it's a very good book, uh, it gives details about uh, the whole cholesterol levels and the different testing methods and also the various uh, levels of cholesterol and the clinical impact or the implications of uh, high level of uh, cholesterol. So what is cholesterol? Cholesterol is a 27 carbon compound with a hydrocarbon tail and a central uh, sterol nucleus made of four hydrocarbon rings and the hydroxyl group. Here you can see the structure of cholesterol and the cholesterol is packaged together with the apoprotein in order to be carried through the blood circulation as lipoprotein. So it is basically a lipoprotein and it is a 27 carbon compound. So what are the biological compounds that are synthesized from cholesterol in the body? So the cholesterol uh, fulfills several biological functions and is necessary for successful cellular homeostasis. It is it acts as a precursor uh, to bile salts, uh, production of or synthesis of steroid and vitamin D and it is also uh, helpful in maintaining the cellular membrane rigidity and fluidity. So you can refer to this paper on the mechanism and regulation of uh, uh, cholesterol homeostasis and also the biochemistry of cholesterol from these papers. So what are the dietary sources of cholesterol? Uh, dietary cholesterol is a main uh, steroid from animal tissue. So these are mainly from the animal tissue and the main food sources uh, that includes egg yolk, shrimp, beef and pork, poultry as well as the cheese and butter. So these are the sources uh, where we can get uh, cholesterol through diet or the food sources which provide cholesterol. So the, uh, you can refer this article dietary cholesterol and the lack of evidence in uh, cardiovascular disease. So there is a lot of debate going on on the uh, level of cholesterol and the cardiovascular disease. I think this is a good paper or a review paper. We can go, you can go through it and get uh, more insights on this. So as discussed earlier, so we are here to discuss about the uh, principle of uh, cholesterol assay. So the enzyme cholesterol esterase is used to hydrolyze the cholesterol esters present in the serum uh, to convert that into free cholesterol and free fatty acids. And in the next step, the enzyme cholesterol oxidase in presence of oxygen oxidizes the cholesterol to cholesterol and hydrogen peroxide. And this hydrogen peroxide react with uh, uh, amino antipyrin uh, to produce a red color in presence of uh, peroxidase. So that is basically the uh, uh, different steps involved in the estimation of uh, uh, cholesterol. So here you can see the cholesterol esters uh, the, uh, converted into cholesterol and free fatty acid and that in presence of um, cholesterol oxidase uh, gets converted into cholesterol and uh, hydrogen peroxide. This hydrogen peroxide uh, react with the uh, amino antipyrin to produce colored dye and the intensity of color is formed uh, is directly proportional to the um, cholesterol concentration in the serum. So the procedure involves uh, uh, measurement of cholesterol sample with a uh, reagent. So uh, for this assay, we need uh, three different tubes or depending on the number of samples you are processing. So one should be blank, the other is a standard and then a number of test samples. So to each uh, tube, uh, add one ml of the uh, reagent and to the uh, tubes uh, labeled with standard, add 10 microliter of the standard and to the test, 
at 10 microliter of the serum sample. So all this should be mixed and incubated at 37 for 5 minutes and the absorbance can be measured using a spectrophotometer. And the uh, standard and the test sample uh, is measured against the blank. So to calculate the cholesterol, uh, absorbance of uh, uh, sample divided by the absorbance of standard into the concentration of standard. So we, if when you use a standard, you will get a concentration of, you know, the non concentration of standard and the absorbance of that value. So absorbance of the sample divided by the absorbance of uh, standard into the concentration of the standard will give you the cholesterol of the sample in mg per deciliter. And if you want to convert this to a millimole per liter, the conversion factor can be used to convert uh, uh, mg per deciliter into the millimole per liter. So these are the different uh, cholesterol levels. Uh, so ideally uh, total cholesterol should be less than uh, 200 mg per deciliter and LDL should be ideally less than 100 uh, mg per deciliter and the HDL level should be greater than 60 and for triglycerides it is less than 150 uh, mg per deciliter. Any variation in this causes uh, increased levels of cholesterols. So for the borderline, uh, the 200 to uh, 239 of the total cholesterol is considered a borderline and anything about uh, 240 is considered as very high. Uh, coming to LDL, uh, the borderline is uh, 130 to 159 and anything above 150, 160 to 189 is considered high and anything above 190 is very high. Similarly, for triglycerides, uh, anything above 500 uh, mg per deciliter uh, is considered as a very high. So, medication may be uh, prescribed for very high cholesterol levels. So, we have seen in the beginning that uh, how we are measuring the uh, total cholesterol and now we will see how to measure the triglyceride and the HDL. For triglyceride measurement, uh, there are, it's a multi-step uh, process and which involves uh, initially that uh, triglycerides are converted into glycerol and fatty acids using the enzyme lipase and this glycerol is converted into glycerol 3 phosphate using the enzyme glycerokinase and glycerol 3 phosphate is converted into uh, dihydroxyacetone phosphate using glycerol phosphate uh, oxidase and this uh, then uh, reacts with the um, uh, chromogen uh, along with the uh, hydrogen peroxide to give a color compound and that can be measured spectrophotometrically. For the uh, HDL or the high density lipoprotein, the ApoB containing lipoproteins in the specimen are reacted with a blocking reagent that renders them non-reactive with the enzyme cholesterol reagent under the assay conditions. So the ApoB containing lipoproteins are then thus effectively excluded from the assay and only HDL cholesterol is uh, detected. So coming to the Fredwald equation, see most of the uh, circulating uh, cholesterol is found in three major uh, lipoprotein fractions that is uh, VLDL or the very low density lipoproteins, uh, low density lipoprotein and the HDL or the high density lipoprotein. The Fredward equation was developed in 1972 and it estimates uh, the uh, low density lipoprotein cholesterol as LDLC is equal to the total cholesterol uh, minus the HDLC minus the triglyceride by 5. The triglyceride by 5 is an estimate of uh, VLDL cholesterol and all values are expressed in uh, mg per deciliter. So there are various uh, reasons for uh, high cholesterol levels. These include uh, diabetes, uh, liver or kidney disease, polycystic ovary syndrome, uh, pregnancy, hyperthyroidism, obesity and other genetic factors. All these can have impact on the cholesterol levels. Hope you are clear with this topic. If you like the video, please press the like button and share it with your friends. Thank you.